Man, you know some of y'all funny, man. At per usual, hold on a sec. Yeah, I haven't had too many of y'all say this, but some of y'all been in my comment section, like one of my own frat brothers. I saw a frat brother of mine wrote in my comment section. He said, <clears throat> yo, Noop, I'm a fan of your videos. Yeah, matter of fact, speaking of the word Noop, I know some of y'all have seen that term either in my comment section or in my fraternity brother, Kevin Samuels, who's popular in the, as they say, the black side of YouTube. You see the word N-U-P-E, Noop. That's a nickname if you're a member of the, of the black fraternity, Kappa Alpha Psi. Yeah. Just about all of them have a nickname. Like the major black fraternities, if you're a member of Alpha Phi Alpha, they just simply call you an Alpha. That's all. Oh, he's an Alpha. If you're a member of Omega Psi Phi, they'll say, oh, he's a Q-Dog. Like Michael Jordan and Shaquille O'Neal are Q-Dogs. They'll say, oh, he's a Q. Some people just say he's a Q, or other people say he's a Q-Dog. Um... If you remember Phi Beta Sigma, they just simply call you a Sigma. They say, oh, he's a Sigma. And yeah, if you remember Kappa Alpha Psi, you'll be called one of two things. Some people just simply say, oh, he's a Kappa. But our other popular nickname is Noop, N-U-P-E. That's short for, see, our fraternity almost has two sets of names, Kappa Alpha Psi, and then we have Phi Nu Pi. Which, if you're a noob, you know what that means. It has kind of its own meaning. Phi Nu Pi. Phi Nu Pi. Kappa Alpha, like you'll see a lot of hats with Kappas. It'll say Kappa Alpha Psi, then at the bottom it'll say Phi Nu Pi. K Psi Phi Nu Pi. Yeah, that's where noob comes from, short for the new pie and Phi Nu Pi. Like sometimes you'll see two Kappas talking to each other, they'll say, What's up, Phi? What's up, Phi? That's where that comes from. So letting you enlighten you on that. Yeah, that's where that comes from. What's up, Fire? What's up, Noop? So I've had people occasionally ask me that. They say, I I've seen this in comments. Where people say, call you a Noop. Yeah, that's a nickname for a member of Kappa Alpha Psi. It's a Noop. Um, but anyway, yeah, I had a Noop coming in my say. He said, man, Alan, I'm a fan of your videos, but man, recently I noticed you don't really be dropping no no game, man, in 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 your your YouTube videos, man. You, it's like I got to become a Patreon subscriber to hear you drop game. Yeah, exactly. So to this noob and other people who might be new to my channel, I changed my format. What? How long has it been now? About three weeks, four weeks? I go close to four weeks. Yeah, man, I changed my format. So I already announced this about three or four weeks ago, but now I'm no longer, with the exception of occasionally, occasionally I might, but for the most part, I ain't going to be dropping no heavy duty knowledge, wisdom, insight, and dating related advice in the free portion. Because see, up until about a month ago, I did just the opposite. Between roughly mid-January and late March, I was dropping all kinds of lengthy Videos filled with heavy duty knowledge, wisdom, insight, and dating advice for free. And the, the downside of that is that it was causing me to lose Patreon subscribers. Like last year in 2018, the highest amount of Patreon subscribers I had was roughly about 215. That was in late July, early August. I had as many as 215. Then, starting with early to mid-August of last year, all the way up until early to mid-March of this year, that dropped down to 170. 170. So I lost about 45 Patreon subscribers. And I was starting to get a lot of complaints from Patreon subscribers. It was like, Alan, man, what's the point of us being a $5 a ten dollar subscriber, or in some cases a twenty. Well, twenty and fifty. I didn't really complain from them because they get like discounted uh, Skype consultations from me, so they don't really complain too much. But 
the five dollar and ten dollars was like, man, what's the point of us paying five dollars, ten dollars, man, if you're giving away all this, you know, valuable knowledge, wisdom, and insight for free? So yeah, man, that's what caused me to change my format. And sure enough, you see the, the the result of that, the benefits for me of that, and my Patreon subscribers. Yep, I went from two fifteen last year all the way down to one seventy. Now I'm up to I think somewhere between three twenty five and three thirty. Right now, I have somewhere between three twenty five and three three hundred and thirty Patreon subscribers. Um. So yeah, man, I'm happy. My Patreon subscribers are happy. So yeah, I keep most of my worthwhile knowledge, wisdom, insight, and advice for Patreon exclusive content, man. I ain't, you know, so the free portion is for me to either, either just give a teaser about what I'm going to talk about in my Patreon ex exclusive portion or to just talk about other shit that's going on in my life, such as drama, Beefs and bullshit. Drama, beefs, and bullshit. Now, somebody asked me, it's just a simple, straightforward question. And I've been asked this question quite a few times. This, this, I even used to get asked this question even before I got on YouTube to a degree. But definitely since I've been on YouTube. Simply was, Alan, why do you think you're such a magnet for... A lot of drama, back and forth beefs with people, haterade, and all of the above. What, what, what's up, man? What, what, why is it? What, what do you think it is about you? Because it seemed like, man, ever since you got on YouTube, you've been kind of the, the center point of a lot of, uh, definitely of a lot of haterade. A lot of drama, a lot of back and forth beefs. And I'll say this. First, I'll start off acknowledging my own contribution to that. So that's the first thing I'm going to do before I criticize anybody else. I'm going to acknowledge my own contribution to that. There's no one way I would say I've contributed to that. is, as you know, I tend to do a lot of response and rebuttal videos, which drives my older brother crazy. <laughs> i tell you that. You know, my brother don't like when I always make public all of our discussions, but that is one aspect, one of at least two major aspects that my brother can't say. My brother hates when I do response and rebuttal videos. Response and rebuttal videos. He's like, bruh, you ain't got to respond to everybody. You ain't got to offer rebuttal to everybody. Let people say what they're going to say and just keep it moving. Let people say, because see, my brother has his attitude. And matter of fact, one of my frat brothers, speaking of my fraternity, I got a frat brother I'm real close to. I just hung out with him in Los Angeles the last time I was in LA, just a couple weeks ago. We from the same hometown in Gary, Indiana. And matter of fact, he's fun, he, he one of the most naturally funny motherfuckers you can never hang around, man. He just, he has a quick wit. Quick wit. He's a real just naturally funny motherfucker, man. Um, he's a screenwriter. And, um, but him and my brother have this philosophy, and I'm sure a lot of you heard this. When they're criticizing on me, they say, man, number one, you shouldn't be beefing with people, period. And number two, you should never beef down. I'm sure at least a handful of you have heard that. You should never beef down. Like, i give you one example. Spike Lee, when he first came on the scene as a filmmaker, Spike Lee beefed up. <laughs> he beefed up. I want to say 50 Cent did the same thing. He beefed up. What does it mean to beef up versus beef down? When you're beefing with somebody that has more notoriety, more fame, more popularity than you do, that means you're beefing up. You're beefing up. Like, if I had to be honest, that's what AMS did with me. If you know the, 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 the history between me and Alpha Male Strategies, he came after me starting with late December of 2017 and January, February of 2018. He used to keep my name in his mouth all the time. 
He used to keep my name in his mouth all the time because he was beefing up. But now that he's got a certain level of popularity, you notice he don't really mention me no more. Have you noticed that? He don't really mention me no more. See, let's put it like this. When I was here and he was here, he kept my name in his mouth. I will stress, he's kept my name in his mouth. Then as he started rising and got to at least here, if not here, now he's basically had an attitude. I don't need to talk about Alan Roger Curry no more because my popularity has risen. So when he was down here, he beefed up. And that, yeah, that's the thing in like media and entertainment. There's a thing that you should never beef down. In other words, you should never carry on ongoing beef with somebody who has less notoriety than you, less acclaimed than you, is less accomplished than you, has less achievements than you. And yeah, that's what my brother and my frat brother Reese, my brother's always felt that way. He's like, dude, you on Wikipedia. Are any of these motherfuckers you beefing with on Wikipedia? Are they? So I ain't the only one to talk about Wikipedia. My brother brings that up a lot. He's like, dude, why are you beefing with motherfuckers that ain't even on Wikipedia? He just said, he said, I can see if like, you know, somebody famous, uh, A-list celebrity was talking, like Chris Rock was talking shit about you, or Kevin Hart was talking shit about you in the media, and you start beefing with them. Because he said that would benefit you because because they're more popular than you, the fact that they keeping your name in their mouth would cause your popularity to rise. But he said, you beefing with motherfuckers that beyond YouTube, nobody know who the fuck they are. <laughs> nobody know who the fuck these people are. I don't know who the fuck these people are you beefing with. I don't know who the fuck these people are you being. And my friend brother just said that the other day. He's like, I don't know who the fuck these people are you beefing with. Who are these people? Why are you wasting time beefing with people who I don't know who the fuck they are? They ain't got no name out here in Hollywood. So that's why I'll acknowledge guilt, man. I've been guilty not only just of beefing, but beefing down. Beefing with people who have less notoriety than me, less acclaim than me. They ain't got no public speaking history. They ain't got no books. They ain't never been on national TV. But here I am beefing with these motherfuckers. So that's on me. That's on me. Um... Number two, man, I'm a very outspoken motherfucker. That's another thing that sometimes gets my brother even riled up. Me and my brother, believe it or not, we've had spats about this, man. You know, my brother, again, he knows I'm a grown-ass man. But if you know about big brother and little brother relationships, big brother's always going to be a combination of overprotective. And they're going to always want to get that little brother advice that they think is worthwhile. And... um Yeah, my brother, he like, there's a term when I when I get real real with people, I call it being hardcore real. Like a lot of my hardcore real videos, my brother, he can't stand them videos, man. He like, he be shaking his head like, bro. I don't even understand why you gotta be hardcore real with these dudes, man. Why? Why? So yeah, even my brother, man, a lot of times he thinks I keep shit too real. He admires that I keep shit real to a degree. But sometimes he feels like I need to put a cap on how real I keep shit, depending on what the subject matter is. But I'm a very outspoken dude. And a lot of people don't like outspoken people. They don't. I mean, look at the history of the world. I'm, this goes beyond YouTube and the world of book authors and dating coaches. I'm talking about just worldwide. Do you know a lot of people literally have been assassinated simply because they were bold truth tellers? Jesus Christ, <laughs> if you're religious, if you keep up with Jesus Christ, that's what Jesus Christ was killed, man, because he, he was he, he was too truthful, man. People was like, he telling too much truth. A lot of civil rights leaders were killed because they were telling too much truth. A lot of people don't like truth tellers, don't, don't like bold truth tellers, man. They just don't. People don't like people who just tell too much truth, man. To the point where the number one time you, you, you're really going to be a target for, say, something like an assassination, if your truth telling is causing people to lose money. Like, let's say I was telling truth about, I don't know, some aspect of the food industry that caused some 
aspect of the food industry to start losing millions, if not billions of dollars, man. Shit, man. I would be a marked man. I would get marked. Motherfuckers be like, man, Alan, Alan S. Curry keep talking about the beef industry or the sugar industry. And now we losing hundreds of millions of dollars every year because of this motherfucker running his mouth. We got to shut his ass up. So anytime you're an outspoken, bold truth teller, depending on what you're telling truth about, again, the main time you're going to be a target for death is if you're telling truth that's causing people to lose like millions of dollars, if not hundreds of millions or billions of dollars. When you're telling that type of truth, oh, people are going to come after you, man. Now, I, ain't, I ain't never told no truth that has caused nobody to lose millions or hundreds of millions of dollars. But yeah, when you tell that type of truth, that's what motherfuckers going to be like, okay, his ass got to get, we got to shut his ass up. And there's another reason why answering the question, why am I a magnet for drama? For Well, here's, here's two things. And then I see my time is running out. So I got to, I, I can't be too lengthy, but Two other things I'll add. One is, if you remember when I first got on YouTube, I said two things that have still to this day been true. I remember specifically, I came on YouTube doing video podcasts in early April of 2017, a little over, just over two years ago. And I remember either in my second, third, no later than my fourth video, there was two things I said that have held true to this day. There's two things I said. I said, Number one, I said I was lightheartedly talking about my strengths and weaknesses as just a person in general, in particular as a book author and dating coach. I said my, I talked about strengths, which is probably the longer list. And then I highlighted maybe two or three weaknesses of mine. And the two or three weaknesses, one, I said, I'm a name narcissist. <laughs> I like to hardly call myself a name-related narcissist. What do I mean by a name? Nar In other words, this relates to the, the thing my brother and my frat brother hate about me doing me all my response and rebuttals. I pay attention when people m mention my name. I pay attention when people mention my name. Some people know how to ignore, particularly like well-established celebrities, they know how to ignore when people... Are mentioning their name. Now, I'll tell you one celebrity who's, who has that weakness. If you keep up with NBA basketball, Kevin Durant. That's one of the things Kevin Durant gets criticized for, man. He, like, pays attention to when his name is mentioned on, like, Twitter and Facebook and social media in general. He, like, he, he, don't, he don't like his name being mentioned in a negative way, man. And so he he, he would be somebody who I would lightheartedly call a name narcissist. He don't, like, he don't like for people to discuss it. But once you get into the public eye, you got to expect that. But the bigger thing I said about myself, I said, I said, one thing about me, I said, modesty ain't my strong suit in a lot of areas. I said, modesty ain't my strong suit. And that's why probably my single biggest criticism I get from a lot of people is the criticism of, Alan, you cool, but damn, man, you come across as very cocky very egotistical, very full of yourself, very conceited. I've gotten those type of criticism even before I came to YouTube. That was probably in the top two, top three criticisms I would receive from people, both men and women. People would say, man, you, you come across, man, as real cuz, man, you know. Yeah, I, I, but I said that when I first got on YouTube. I said, minus, and it depends on what you're talking about. Now, there's some areas, of course, of life I'm modest in. Like, if you put me right now in Silicon Valley in a room full of computer software experts, what am I going to be cocky about? I ain't got no expertise in computer software. If you stuck me on an NBA court with the Toronto Raptors and Golden State Warriors, knowing that I ain't got the athletic talent that these guys have, what am I going to be cocky about? So it depends on what you're talking about, what area of life and area of expertise you're talking about. But the one area I am, if no other area, I'm extremely uh, cocky about and I said this when I first got on YouTube, is anything related to verbal seduction and erotic dirty talk. Verbal seduction and erotic dirty talk. In that specific area, I know I'm the shit. 
I know I'm the shit. That's why my nickname is the king of verbal seduction. I know I'm the shit. I ain't got no modesty in that area. I ain't got no modesty in that area because I know I'm the shit. All you got to do is listen to me on my old blog talk radio shows, man. I had women playing with their pussy when their husband or boyfriend was in the room with them, man. You got to be a bad motherfucker to do that shit. To get a woman to play with a pussy while her boyfriend or fiance or husband is in the room with her? I did that at least two or three times on, when I was on my blog talk radio show. I had women playing with themselves with the husband, fiance, or boyfriend in the room with them. You got to be a bad motherfucker to do that shit, man. So yeah, that's one area if no other area. When it comes to anything related to verbal seduction, erotic, dirty talk, I know I'm the shit. And I ain't going to act like I'm modest about that shit. I know I'm the motherfucking shit. That's why I'm teaching. That's why I'm a teacher of it. Because I know I'm the shit. Like, I know guys who've got more pussy than me in my life. Some friends and friends got more pussy than me, but their verbal seduction skills ain't better than me. Like, they've ended up, like, there's a lot of guys who get pussy. If you know about my five archetypes, reciprocated, rejected, wholesome, pretending, erotic, hypocrites, manipulative, time wasters, I know a lot of guys who got a lot of pussy, but 90% of that pussy has been from reciprocators. It's been from reciprocators. They didn't get no wholesome pretenders or erotic hypocrites in bed. But when it comes to getting specifically those two archetypes of women in bed, wholesome pretenders and erotic hypocrites, I would go as far as say, I don't think there's a motherfucker on walking this earth better than me in that area. <laughs> and I'll stand by that to the day I die. I don't think there's a motherfucker on earth better than me when it comes to seducing the wholesome pretender archetype of women and erotic hypocrite archetype of women. Matter of fact, the woman who you always hear me refer to as Sharon on multiple videos, it was her and her two girlfriends that gave me that nickname, the king of verbal seduction. And it was because they, they were an eyewitness to me seducing a lot of wholesome pretender and erotic hypocrite type women. And that's when they even had to give me my dad. It was like, damn, Alan, you the king of this shit. You know how to turn a slow no into a fast yes. That's what they used to say. You know how to turn a borderline no into an enthusiastic yes. A lot of guys don't have that talent. Again, there's a lot of guys that know how to get women in bed that are already attracted to them, that are already down to fuck them. I know a lot of guys, professional athletes, celebrities, a lot of guys who know how to get that type of pussy, what I call reciprocated pussy. But I'm talking about getting pussy when a woman starts off heaven resisting you and basically on the verge of rejecting you and you know how to reel her back in to the point where she gives you some pussy. Ain't, ain't a lot of motherfuckers got that talent. I do. And anyway, yeah, man, but when I first came on YouTube, I said, man, I said I am in certain areas to deal with, particularly that deal with my books, Matter of fact, here's, here's an interesting thing, man. I heard a guy say this early this week. He said, Alan, well, he didn't say it to me. He was on a live stream. He was talking about me. He was talking about my book, The Beta Man Revolution. This is something I heard. This is not specifically a YouTube thing. I've heard this literally for the last 10 years. This goes back about 10 years. This guy said on this live stream, he said, he said, you want to know the number one problem I had with The Beta Man Revolution? Is not the book itself, but it's the fact that Alan Roger Curry is the author. <laughs> and he was serious. He didn't say it like lightheartedly. He said it real seriously. He said, I he basically in some he basically like, I don't like Alan Roger Curry. <laughs> he just flat out pretty much said it. He said, I don't like Alan Roger Curry. He said, but I love his book. He said his book is good. He said, I have a few disagreements with it. But he said, overall, I like the book. But he said, I don't like Alan Roger Curry. And I remember I used to post on this site I mentioned before called the London Seduction Society Forum. The London Seduction Society Forum. And um, it's, it got shut down. It's no longer. But it was, it was probably the most popular dating and relationships advice message board discussion forum for men based in London. And I had at least a handful of guys used to say that to me on that message board. They said, Alan, like I had this one guy, he wrote me, he said, Alan, can I be honest with you? I'm going to give you a compliment, but I'm going to give you a criticism. I said, sure, go ahead. He said, man, your book, Mo One, is one of the most thorough books I've ever read, man. He said, that book is just, it's just an excellent book. 
He said, but at the risk of offending you, I wish somebody else wrote that book other than you. <laughs> he said that. He said, I wish somebody else was the author of that book other than you. He said, because I just, honestly, I don't like you, man. And he said, I say that with, with, with respect, actually. But he said, I just, and his main criticism related to what I already talked about. He said, he said, my main problem with you, man, you just, you come across as very cocky and egotistical and full of yourself. And he said, it's just a turnoff to a guy like me, man. He said, I, I just don't, I don't want to hear a, a guy who I perceive as cocky giving me dating and relationships advice. I want a guy who has a more humble demeanor and disposition about himself, uh, far more humility about himself. But you, you just, you, you tend to lack in the modesty and humility department. And for that reason, more than any other reason, he said, I just don't really care for you as a person. But he said, as an author, he said, you're an excellent author. He said, I, I've, I've got all your books. He said, there's not one book you've written that I haven't liked. He said, because you know your shit. You know your shit. You know how to break down shit very thoroughly. He said, so your books are the shit. But he said, you the person, man. I almost sometimes wish somebody else wrote your books that was more likable. Which leads me to a segue for my Patreon exclusive portion. Why being likable? This is kind of if you already watched my Patreon exclusive, I think you me yesterday or the day before yesterday, it's kind of going to be loosely related to the same subject because I already dealt with compliments and criticism actually in the Patreon exclusive. But I'm kind of going to be touching on this issue again because a lot of people have been asking me questions, I think because of that Patreon exclusive. Alan, it seemed like a lot of women in my life, they always say they like me, but I ain't really getting laid. I'm going to go into more detail about why the whole likability issue is overrated. And another thing I'm going to touch on is some I've reiterated a number of times, but Mo One is not solely and specifically about getting laid. I've had to repeat that a number of times, but I'm repeating it again in my Patreon exclusive portion. If the only Literally, the only reason you're you're attempting to exhibit more one behavior is for the sole and specific purpose of getting laid. You're making a mistake, and I'm gonna break down why in my Patreon exclusive portion. 